Cell membranes consist not only of a phospholipid bilayer, but also of sterols, which are lipids that have four interconnected carbon rings, proteins, and other molecules. So cell membranes have the phospholipid bilayer as the base, but embedded in that you also have sterols, proteins, and other molecules. And as such, the cell membrane is often referred to as a fluid mosaic. Mosaic because it's made of several structures. Or components. And fluid because the membrane actually can move around. It's not constant. It doesn't stay in one place. So the phospholipids and other proteins that are embedded within it can actually move around. They are fluid within the cell membrane. The cell membranes of both animal and plant cells have phospholipid bilayers shown here. Similar to the plant cell membrane. However, embedded in only animal cell membranes is the sterol called cholesterol. Cholesterol is only in animal cell membranes. In plant cell membranes, the sterol is called phytosterol. And the purpose of these sterols is to maintain the membrane's fluidity, which makes it more flexible. Note that only animal cell membranes contain cholesterol. In plants and bacteria, phytosterol increases the membrane's flexibility. Both animal and plant cells have proteins embedded in their cell membranes. And they also have something called a cytoskeleton. Made out of uh, another type of protein, which just provides or helps to provide structure for the cell membrane. Of course, a plant cell also has a cell wall surrounding the cell membrane, which is made up of cellulose. The lipid component of membranes provide them with a unique property of being able to be flexible but also to repair themselves. This allows cells to change shape and grow. Additionally, if the cell membrane is punctured, some of the cytoplasm will leak out but the whole will quickly seal itself and biotechnological procedures make use of this property when the inside of the cell needs to be accessed. So, for example, the cloning of embryos for generating stem cells is a process that holds a lot of promise for future treatment of deadly diseases such as diabetes and Parkinson's. And the first step in this process is to remove the nucleus from an unfertilized egg. And this process is being shown on the image on the right here. So C is a tiny little microneedle which is being used to puncture a stem cell to remove the nucleus. Over here is a tiny little suction pipette which is being used to hold the cell in place. So that microneedle will actually puncture through the cell membrane in order to extract the nucleus and when the microneedle is removed the cell membrane will simply repair itself or repair that puncture in the hole. Uh, a similar procedure is actually using a microneedle to inject a small bit of DNA which contains a therapeutic gene into the nucleus of a target cell so that that cell can then use that DNA 
And this is referred to as gene therapy, which is a technique that uses genes to treat or prevent disease. While phospholipids and sterols provide the membrane its structure, proteins are important to its function. Some of the proteins lie completely within the phospholipid bilayer, whereas others extend out one or both sides. There are a range of different proteins in the cell membrane that do different jobs. Transport proteins embedded in the phospholipid bilayer create passageways through which water-soluble molecules and ions can pass into or out of the cell. An example is the rapid movement of ions across the membrane when a nerve is stimulated. And this causes a dramatic change in the electronic potential difference, which is the difference in positive and negative, across the membrane and explains how the electrical charge of a nerve impulse is transmitted along nerve cells. There are also enzymes, which are a very important protein embedded in the cell membrane, and these enzymes facilitate chemical reactions that would proceed too slowly to sustain life without these enzymes. Recognition proteins, which I'll draw, are proteins that have carbohydrates attached to them. So this is the carbohydrate. And this is the protein, which makes it a recognition protein. Recognition proteins are unique to each individual. They act as markers called antigens, which allow the immune system to distinguish between the body's own cells and foreign invading cells. And the immune system attacks cells with unfamiliar antigens on the surface, which is why transplant recipients often reject donated organs. Receptor proteins which bind to molecules outside the cell, trigger reactions inside the cell. So receptor proteins bind hormones and other substances that cause changes to the cell's activities. Different types of cells have different receptor proteins, enabling them to respond to only certain signals and to carry out specific functions. And adhesion or anchor proteins enable cells to stick to one another.